Hello, uh, this is Mike Schlosser. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for the National Group of HCA Healthcare, and I'm a neurosurgeon by training. And welcome to our podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be talking to you today about the vaccine tiering system and how it applies to our new COVID-19 vaccine. And with me is Dr. Pranav Mehta. Hello, I'm Pranav Mehta. I'm the CMO for the American Group, and uh, look forward to talking to you about vaccines and vaccine tiering. Mike, back to you. Great, thanks. So this obviously has been a, a very hot topic as of late, and I can say that we're going to provide you with some details on the structure and how the decisions were made about who was going to get the vaccine first and the reasons behind that. But as everyone listening to this podcast knows, this has been something of a moving target here as the pandemic continues to roar on and our public health leaders try to figure out how to best meet the demands uh, of our healthcare workforce, our elderly populations, and, and others who are at high risk of COVID-19. So all that to say that we believe this information to be accurate at the time we recorded this, but things are changing rapidly as they have throughout the entire pandemic. So we're going to start off with talking a little bit about how the initial decisions were made by the CDC to make their recommendations around a tiered approach uh, to release of the COVID-19 vaccine. Obviously, uh, the vaccine would be in somewhat short supply when initially released. And so we had to think about who do we need to target first? And so the CDC went to uh, their committee called ACIP, A-C-I-P, which stands for Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, which is a group that advises CDC on all immunizations, uh, and pulled that group together to have a conversation about how to approach the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, that group met in December. It's a group of 13 leaders from across different walks of life within healthcare. Some are leaders of health systems, other departments of public health. We've got MDs, we've got uh, masters of public health, we've got some uh, attorneys as well. So a broad group with varying expertise who was well positioned to weigh in on what the best approach would be for the CDC to take. The group used what I think was a very thoughtful framework as they thought about how to make this decision. They really looked at three different buckets. They looked at ethics. How do we make an ethical decision about who to target first? They looked at the science behind COVID-19 and the pandemic, who was most impacted by the pandemic and who was most at risk. And then finally, they looked at implementation. How easy would it be to roll out the vaccine? Which groups would be easiest to target first and would likely have high uptake of the vaccine? And they tried to triangulate all three of those uh, into a, an ideal tiered system where we would target those first uh, that had the highest likelihood of uptake, the biggest impact on our society, uh, and, uh, and ultimately save the most lives. So they met on December 1st, 12 of the 13 voted in favor of the tiering system that was ultimately rolled out. Um, and I'm gonna turn it to Dr. Mehta, who's gonna talk a little bit about what that tiering system looked like. Thanks, Mike. As we think about the tiering system, I think the key question in front of us is, when vaccine supply is limited, who should get vaccinated first? And the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, developed criteria for the phase allocation of vaccine. And the phase was really divided into three parts, phase 1A, phase 1B, and phase 1C. I'll take a couple of minutes to talk through each phase and who's included in the phase and the rationale behind the CDC decision. Phase 1A is healthcare personnel that include all paid and unpaid persons serving in healthcare settings who have the potential for either direct or indirect exposure to patients or infectious materials. Examples of them would be uh, healthcare personnel in hospital settings, in long-term care settings, in outpatient settings, in clinical settings. They're all examples of healthcare personnel who are at the highest risk for contracting COVID and so were allocated the vaccine first. The other bucket in phase 1A is long-term care residents. And these are generally elderly patients with multiple comorbidities that are also at a very high risk of contracting COVID-19. Phase 1B is the second phase, and that consists again of frontline essential workers. By that, we mean firefighters, police officers, correction officers, 
other workers that are really essential for us to keep our economy moving. The other population that was included in phase 1B was people ages 75 and older, and they again at high risk for mortality and morbidity. Once you get past phase 1B, you have phase 1C, and phase 1C is really people that are ages 65 to 74, or below 65 and above 16, but have a medical condition, and then other essential workers, for example, people who might be working in transportation, information technology, and in public health. Mike, back to you. Thanks, Pranav. And so uh, we within HCA have taken the CDC and ACIP guidelines and worked to apply them to our own vaccine distribution efforts. As I mentioned earlier, there certainly has been some shifting of the landscape as this has occurred, and we've uh, worked diligently to, to move with those changes. Uh, for example, uh, Dr. Mehta mentioned a, a patients over 75 in Phase 1B. That wasn't part of the initial CDC Phase 1B, but was added um, as we saw the, you know, the pandemic continuing to worsen and, and trying to allocate vaccine to those at highest risk of a bad outcome if they contracted COVID-19. So the leadership here, uh, Dr. Ken Sands has really been leading this effort, has been uh, working tirelessly and, and very responsive to all of the different uh, changes that have occurred. Uh, we also need to reference that once the vaccine is allocated to the states, uh, the CDC's recommendations really become just those, recommendations, and the states are really responsible for making decisions about how the vaccine is distributed. And in some cases, the local health departments have some say in that decision as well. So a lot of uh, variation inserted at that point, uh, all well-intentioned. I think all of those involved here are trying to uh, serve our patients and our healthcare workers and our society, um, but certainly want to reference the, the moving parts uh, involved. So as HCA launched its vaccine work in mid-December, we really followed the CDC guidelines and focused initially on our frontline healthcare workers. And these are really folks who work within HCA in any of our care settings, being in a hospital, an urgent care center, or a physician clinic, and even surgery centers, who have direct contact with patients and therefore are at both at the highest risk of being exposed to COVID, but also the most important in terms of making sure we can maintain the infrastructure that provides care to all of our patients. And so we've been working over the last several weeks diligently to get uh, patients either Pfizer or Moderna, both first and second doses. Uh, I'm sorry, working to get our healthcare workers uh, either Pfizer or Moderna, the first or second dose, to make sure that we supported uh, our healthcare workforce primarily. We then have expanded it to include in some of our markets healthcare workers outside of just HCA. There are many in the community who uh, serve our patients um, but are not directly affiliated with the hospital system, and we wanted to make sure those were included as well, and are now working towards expanding to providing vaccine to inpatients who meet those Tier 1B and potentially Tier 1A criteria. Uh, and so as vaccine supply becomes more available uh, and we complete the work focused on our Tier 1A recipients, we will continue to expand to meet the needs of our public and our community, also partnering closely with the government organizations in each state to follow uh, their local recommendations. So we uh, appreciate you spending a little time on this podcast with us today. Uh, Dr. Mann, any final words? I would say, you know, as vaccine availability increases, our vaccine recommendations will expand to include more groups. The goal is always for everyone to be able to easily get a COVID-19 vaccination as soon as we have enough quantities of vaccine that is available. So thank you for your time again, and please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.